Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, on the bed in a dimly lit cell, Emma Peel struggled feebly. She'd made one unsuccessful attempt to escape by tackling the man Priest when he came to try to extract information from her. Unfortunately, he'd been helped by Dexter, who turned out to be quite an expert with a cosh. Mrs. Peel now had a large bump on the temple and a headache. She was further restricted by a gag and a straitjacket. She'd seldom been more helped. <laughs> Mrs. Peel fell off the bed. She staggered to her feet, lost her balance, and fell heavily against one of the many sacks that were propped against the wall. The sack <laughs> tore open, fell sideways, and started scattering the contents on the floor of the cell. Hundreds of envelopes, all typed out, ready for posting, all exactly the same as those used to cause the deaths of every ear, nose, and throat specialist. Emma Peel passed out. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed, although infected with enthusiasm, realizes that he is still out in the cold and wonders if his efforts are really not to be sneezed at. John Steed, visiting Colonel Morris Timothy, retired, had found him in the grip of a most vicious cold. Steed gathered that this was more or less the Colonel's permanent unhappy state, and that as a result of this, the retired army man had decided to devote the rest of his natural days to finding a cure. Steed, privately, thought it would be a long job, but he agreed to be shown over the Colonel's cold cure clinic, which was attached to the house. Well, this way. I'm sure you'd like to see our deep freeze room where we induce colds for curing. Yes. This way. Evening, nurse. Evening, Dr. Glover. Evening, Colonel. Hello. Hello. Evening. Steed did not react, but he did note that the badge on the nurse's uniform read Anastasia Academy. The first nurse had also had that uniform. That's true. Uh, what's that? Well, I said, uh, uh, uh two. Uh, bless you. Uh, yes. This way, Mr. Steve. It's sort of still, isn't it? Yeah, everything must be ultra sanitary and 100% hygienic. <clears throat> Quite. Uh, now, tell me, these, these guinea pigs, the students who volunteer, do, do they do this for fun? Science. They get free board and expenses. Oh, this is the room. It's kept just below freezing point. Prolonged exposure to such a temperature usually induces a cold within 48 hours. Would you care to look through the grill? Hmm. That certainly should have might have Oh, I don't think it does any permanent harm. What happens when they've caught the cold bug? Then we isolate the virus and inoculate the patients with experimental antidotes. Come and see our allergy room. Oh, thank you. I believe you're quite a fashion, Doctor. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you, nurse. I um, see that you employ Anastasia nurses. Yes, all part of the helpful organization. Uh, Grubber here insists on it. You train them, we'll use them. And they are only the best. The matron Alice sees to that. I'll see now. In here next. Seventy-five percent of the population have at least one cold a year. Twenty-five percent have four or more. The loss of working hours is staggering. The mind boggles. <coughs> Quite. 
So this laboratory is where we experiment on antidotes for allergic diseases. And we're after complete victory. Yes, no good chasing the enemy into the foothold where they can regroup, search and destroy, while they're still out on a raiding party. That's the ticket. Fight them in the veins and in the arteries. In the cells and in the membrane. In the handkerchief. And in the paper tissues. Biggest mistake they made was to invade me. I intend to fight back with every weapon at my disposal. Yes. Every weapon. Out in the night, speeding its way towards the heart of the city, was a Rolls Royce. Priest, in the back seat, reached for the speaking tube. With the other hand, he held an envelope. Dexter, you may as well know our destination. The same as before, Dr. Padley Seaton and Herrick. This time, it's for Dr. Herrick. Do hurry, Dexter. We don't want the doctor to be too late to collect a special delivery. John Steed completed his tour of the clinic. Well, thank you, Dr. Glover. Most interesting. Well, I I hope you'll decide to join us, Mr. Steed. The more the merrier. Carry on the good work, Glover. <clears throat> Remember our aim? Unconditional surrender. <clears throat> ah, this way, Steed. Be a long campaign, Steed. Long campaign. And, of course, you're running short of allies. Uh, uh, what's that? Cameras. Hadley. Seaton. All dead. Uh, did you know them? I, uh, I wrote to them several times. Never had a reply. Uh, like a drink? Scott? Oh, thank you. As Colonel Timothy, retired, turned to the drinks cabinet, Steed sneaked a quick look down at the open appointment book on the desk. What he saw gave him quite a start. For there, in the colonel's precise hand, was written, Contact Herrick. Uh, I suppose they thought themselves above this sort of thing. Perhaps they thought, as specialists, they were too good. Uh, too brilliant to work on something as common as the common cold. Uh, your drink. Oh, thank you, colonel. But I don't think I'll stay for it after all. Um, thank you again. Uh, see you. Oh, really, really, Steve, but you haven't... haven't... <coughs> And under cover of this last outburst, Steed left. He made for the nearest phone box on the London Road. In the London consulting rooms of Padley, Seaton and Herrick, old Dr. Herrick was working late. He sighed, stretched himself. Uh, Is sufficient to the day. Uh... Oh, no, no. No more calls. Sufficient to the day. Oh. Downstairs in the park rolls, Priest gave his instructions. The delivery doesn't take place to the rooms, Dexter. That's Herrick's car, the large black one standing over there by the entrance to the park. Leave the envelope propped up against the inside of the windscreen... Then come back here and wait. John Steed, having given up hope of reaching Herrick by phone, ran back to his Bentley, climbed in, and drove as fast as he could towards town. <laughs> While in the road, Priest waited patiently. It had its reward. Eventually, old Mr. Herrick left his rooms, doddered his way down the steps, and over to his car. There he goes. Won't be long now, Dexter. Herrick's car was an automatic. He got in, started the engine, slipped the car into gear, and was about to drive off when he noticed the envelope propped up on the inside of the windscreen. Herrick frowned, took the envelope, ripped it open. The effect was immediate. He first his knee... <laughs> His foot slipped as he was thrown forward and hit the accelerator pedal. The car shot forward at great speed, rapidly climbed the grass verge. At the entrance of the park gate stood a large tree. Herrick's car hit it a glancing blow. The door flew open, and with one last enormous sneeze, Herrick pitched out. <laughs> as the rolls purred by the crash, Steve arrived. He stopped outside Padley, Seaton, and Herrick and then saw Herrick's crashed car. He hurried over. A glance told him that Herrick was dead, 
Another glance showed him the envelope clutched in the old man's hand. In the allergy room of the cold cure clinic, another envelope was being held, this time by a pair of rubber gloves worn by Matron Alice. Adjust your mask. Now, the nozzle into the envelope and... Seal it. Oh. And now, this is a special delivery. Note the name, personal and private. John Steed, Esquire. Urgent. <laughs> this must go at once. While I go and attend to that little pet nuisance of ours, I rather fancy she needs cooling off. There was only one person John Steed could talk to. A person just as worried about the case as he was. Mother. Things are going out of control, Steed. I told you when I assigned the case that it was urgent. Now, every day brings in more reports of specialists dying. Now, why do you think I sent for you in the first place? I'm beginning to have my doubts, Mother. Your job is to stop the smear in the medical profession. I wish we could find Mrs. Peel. How far have you got now? Four envelopes. Well, that's an improvement. Last time it was 10,000. Uh, what have they got to do with it? I wish I knew. One was found near every dead man. Mm. Well, it's no use running to a mother all the time. Find out anything at Timothy's place? No. No, not really. Well, I'm not surprised. I am. Why? Too many arrows point in that direction. Laws of coincidence broken too often. That's right. Emma Peel was on to something before she disappeared. How do you know? Because she sent for Dr. Fawcett of the Institute of Allergic Diseases. Hmm. Had a chat with him? A short one. Uh, may I use your phone? Mm, help yourself. Not that one. Unless you can speak fluent Swahili. Well, as a matter of fact, I do. However, <coughs> I think you're sickening. What? For a cold, mother. For a cold. to John Seed and Emma Field, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen. 